In this lesson, we are going to use function notation to evaluate and interpret functions, use function notation to solve and graph functions, solve real life problems using function notation. You know that a linear function can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. By naming a linear function f, you can also write the function using function notation. So right here we see that instead of y equals mx plus b, we see f of x equals mx plus b. Now you might say f and then we see parentheses. You might think that that's multiplication, but in function notation, the f next to the parentheses means f of x. So that means that f is a function of x. That means x is our independent variable of this function. The notation f of x is another name for y. If f is a function and x is in its domain, then f of x represents the output of f corresponding to the input x. You can use letters other than f to name a function, such as g or h. So in this example, we're going to evaluate f of x equals negative 4x plus 7 when x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. So what that means is we just want to plug 2 and then negative 2 in for the x here. So the way we would write this is f of 2 equals negative 4, and then any time we see an x in our function, we plug in a 2 for it. So I just substituted my 2, and now I just simplify. So f of 2 equals, well this is going to be negative 8, plus 7, and f of 2 is going to simplify down to negative 1. So that's what f of 2 is. For negative 2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug in f of negative 2. So anytime I see an x, I'll plug in a negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 2. Remember, always plug in with parentheses, especially with negative numbers. Plus 7. Okay. Well, now I have negative 4 times negative 2, which is positive 8. So 8 plus 7. So f of negative 2 is going to equal 15. And now we're done with this one. Let f of t be the outside temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, t hours after 6 a.m. Explain the meaning of each statement. So in this case, f of 0 equals 58. Well, 0 is going to be our t value, because this is f of t. So this means 0 hours after 6 a.m. So 0 hours after 6 a.m. is just 6 a.m. And then this whole entire function value, f of t, is just the temperature. Okay. Well, this means that at 6 a.m., it was 58 degrees. For part B, we look here. This is our uh, t value is 6, and then f of t, or in this case f of 6, is equal to n. So remember, t means how many hours after 6 a.m., so 6 hours after 6 a.m. is noon, and then that is going to equal n degrees. So at noon, or 12 o'clock p.m., we have a temperature of n degrees Fahrenheit. For part C, we have f of 3 is less than f of 9. So what that means is the temperature uh, 3 hours after 6 a.m., so at 9, so the temperature at 9 a.m., slide over here, is going to be less than the temperature, which is 9 hours after 6 a.m., which is going to be 3 p.m. Okay, so that's what the meaning of a, b, and c uh, of these function notations mean. And now we're done. For h of x equals 2 thirds x minus 5, find the value of x for which h of x equals negative 7. So we know our h of x value, but we don't know what x value makes this true. So this entire h of x, I'm going to end up substituting or plugging in for that entire h of x. Okay, a common mistake would to just be plug in negative 7 for x here, um, but that, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to find what x is, so I'm going to plug in this negative 7 for the entire h of x value. So I'll rewrite my equation as negative 7 equals... 2 thirds x minus 5. And now I just solve for x. First thing I'm going to do is add 5 on both sides. So I get 2 thirds x 
is equal to negative 2. Now I'm multiplying by this fraction, so the best way to cancel that out is to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. So this is going to be multiplied by 3 halves on both sides. And I get x here, and then I get my 2s are going to cancel, so I get negative 1 times 3, which is just negative 3. So this is the x value. Let's go back up here. This is the value of x, negative 3, that makes h of x equal negative 7. So one thing you could write, you don't have to, but you could write h of negative 3 equals negative 7. And now we're done with this one. Graph f of x equals 2x plus 5. So there's tons of different ways to graph functions, but remember, the only difference between this and the graphing we've done in the last section is that we had a y here for our y-axis, but f of x is acting as y. Okay, so I'm going to make a table of values to plot some ordered pairs, and I'll draw a line through it. I'm going to make my table here. I have x and f of x. Now, you only need two points to graph a line, uh, but the more points you have, typically the more accurate your graph is going to be if you are doing it by hand. So um, I'm going to pick some values. I will pick negative 3, negative 1, 0, and I'll say 1. Okay. So you can pick any two points to plug in for x. This is up to you. I, I just chose these random points. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to plug these in. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 5 is 3. 0 is the easiest number to plug in for x. I'd always recommend doing 0 if you can. Uh, so this 2x will cancel when I plug in a 0, so I just get 5. And then when I plug in 1, I get 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 5 is 7. So when I'm looking at my graph, I don't have a scale. Um, I think I'm just going to use one block is one unit, and I could either write... Uh, one number per every single block, but that might get a little messy. So I'm just going to count how many units I have and then put that at the end. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll just put a six here and then a negative six there. And then I believe this is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll put an eight here and a negative eight there. And this just means that each uh, square is representing one unit. Anyway, I'm going to plot my points. So I have negative 3, negative 1, negative 1, and 3, 0, and 5, and 1, and 7. Once you plot your points, we want to graph a line through this uh, because if you look at this, the domain, there's no restrictions on the, on the domain, therefore we assume it's going to be continuous, so I want all possible values that will work for uh, this function. So I'm going to draw a line through my points. So take a straight edge and line them up with your points. It's a little bit harder on the iPad that I'm doing right now, so I apologize if it's not perfect. That wasn't too bad, actually. Anyway, uh, my recommendation when you're graphing a line anytime is to extend it for the entire uh, length of the graph. And then at the end, to show that this line is infinitely long, you want to draw arrows on either end. Okay, so now we have successfully graphed this line. And now we're done. The graph shows the number of miles a helicopter is from its destination after X hours on its first flight. On its second flight, the helicopter travels 50 miles farther and increases its speed by 25 miles per hour. The function f of x equals 350 minus 125x represents the second flight, where f of x is the number of miles the helicopter is from from its destination after x hours. What flight takes less time? Explain. So if we look at the graph down here, I can see that the first flight takes three hours because the distance uh, away from their destination is zero when they reach three hours. Okay, So I'm going to write that down. Flight one. three hours, and then the distance that flight one takes is 300 miles. Okay? So now from this, we can figure out uh, some information about flight two. So I know for flight two, I 
I know the function for flight two is f of x equals 350 minus 125 x. So I'm gonna write that down. So f of x right here is the number of miles that the helicopter is from its destination after x hours. Well, we want that to be zero because if this is zero miles from your destination, that means that you've arrived. So if I set this f of x value, the entire left side of this equation, equal to zero, and then solve for x, that will tell me exactly how much time uh, the second flight took. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'll plug in zero. Equals 350 minus 125x. And now um, you can either add 125x on both sides or subtract 350 on both sides. To avoid a negative, I'm going to add 125x on both sides. And I get 125x equals 350. The last step would be to divide by 125 on both sides. So now I get 350 over 125, but I know I can divide a 25 out, and the re reason I know that is because this ends in a 25 and this ends in a 50. So if I divide a 25 out on the bottom, I get a 5, and on the top of this fraction, I get 14. You could totally do that out if you wanted to. Anyway, now I see my x equals 14 over 5. Well, to compare that to 3 hours, which is the time that it took flight 1, um, I want to convert this into a mixed number or into decimal form. Either way, I'm going to do mixed number. So 5 goes into 14 twice. And then I have a remainder of 4. So the second trip only took two, two and four fifths hours, or 2.8 hours. And if I go back up here, the first trip took three hours. So which flight took less time? Flight number two. So now, since we showed our work, we are done with this one. So now that we've figured out which flight is shorter, we are done.